welcome to the Irresistible Marketing Pod, the podcast that talks you out of structuring your business for burnout. I'm your host, Isa Gauchi, your marketing confidence cheerleader and owner of the Emisa Messaging Digital Marketing Agency. Today, I'm going to share with you a topic that I wind up coaching folks on a lot as a marketing confidence cheerleader, and that is the elegance of stripping down your offers and simplifying the offers themselves and why this is a really good thing to do for your business. Because giving too much for too little leaves you burnt out and resentful. And it makes your customers suspicious about why you don't value your product more highly. So first, I want to start out by talking about elegance, which is a quality so many of us hold in high esteem and we we think of as attractive and desirable. So let's really think about what elegance is for a second. Let's, let's even play a word association game. So when I think of elegance, I think of words like beautiful, high-end, high-quality, luxury, aspirational, desirable, lustworthy. And, you know, I really wouldn't mind my business offers being thought of like that. Would you? Are there a few in there you'd like people to attribute to your offers? I'm betting there is. So why do we find elegance so desirable and admirable and interesting and satisfying? Well, here's what I think of when I think of elegance. I think of everything working in harmony towards one sparklingly, strikingly unified vision, like a symphony or a perfectly choreographed routine or an exquisite evening gown. Each element is intentional. There's not a thing out of place and it's bold in its simplicity. You might say that elegance actually requires simplicity. Coco Chanel once famously said, Before you leave the house, look in the mirror and take one thing off. She also said, elegance is refusal. And you know, I say the same thing applies to your business and your offers. So before you launch or relaunch that offer, take in the whole picture. See what you can subtract. Keep it simple, keep it elegant, ensure what stays in is streamlined, polished, and incredibly high quality. And now, this sounds like common sense, but it's actually harder for many entrepreneurs to do than you might think. Because if we're feeling insecure about money, or even the value that we bring to customers, most of us are tempted to start adding stuff in. Work more for less. Give endless freebies and extras and discounts and sales and and lower and lower and lower and off lower the price of that offer and throw more and more and more into it. And though it feels counterintuitive, the move is actually to offer less and get better at offering it. I can't tell you how many folks myself included, learned this lesson the hard way. And if you don't want to be one of the hordes of us that learned this lesson the hard way, keep listening. I'm going to talk you through six reasons why less is more with your business's offers. So number one, you're going to have a hard time tracking and maintaining zillions of offers. So we're going to talk first about whether your structure of your business is offering too many different things. You've got too many, several, many offers. So if you have a ton of offers, it's a lot of work, not just delivering them, but keeping track of them and maintaining them and keeping them up to date. Believe me, I know, because I started out with like 36 of them and that's why I've narrowed it down to four. So anyway, Now, it's not just servicing those offers that you're going to have to be delivering on. It's also maintaining and updating your sales page for each and every offer. It's also updating your 
home page or any hub page or any other page on your website that mentions or links to the sales page for each offer. Every time the sales page needs an update, so do all the other pages that it's mentioned on or linked on to, from. You're also going to have to keep track of your pricing, payment processor, available payment plans, expected uh, monthly recurring revenue, etc., etc. Um you're going to have to keep track of and update and maintain terms and conditions and contracts for each offer. You'll have to segment your email list, especially if the customer for some of your offers is absolutely not the customer for others, because if you're sending, um, you're just blasting your whole email list with information about offers that they're just not in the market for, you're going to get a a bunch of unsubscribes or people are going to decide your newsletter is irrelevant and not open it. So you're also with a lot of offers going to have to keep track of and maintain and update the upsells and downsells to match each offer. And you'll have to update marketing for each offer to be consistent with the brand because you'll need to update everything whenever you make updates to your big picture branding for your business and so on and so forth. And I gotta tell you the real honest truth, that is a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Maintaining several many offers is a whole lot of stuff that has to be done behind the scenes. And if you aren't selling yet or selling enough yet, this behind the scenes work, which is a lot, is unpaid labor if you're doing it, or it's negative money if you're paying someone else to do it. So let me check in with you. Are you okay with that? Is that you being a good boss to you? Are these reasonable expectations to set for your business, for yourself, to uphold? All right. The number two reason why less is more in terms of your offers is that confused or overwhelmed customers do not buy. If you're struggling to keep track of and maintain your several many offers, there is a very good chance that customers are getting overwhelmed when they look at your website, your newsletters, your link in bio, your socials, and other places where you are marketing. Most leads are not going to spend a lot of time trying to figure out how they can give you their money. They're not going to spend a lot of time trying to figure out which of your offers meets their needs. If they can't figure it out quickly, they're just going to leave. Why? Because choice overload is a thing. When faced with infinite possibilities, choosing one becomes a stressful cognitive process. So many will simply make zero decision at all. And the ones who do make a decision often wonder whether they picked the right one out of their zillions of offers leaving them less than satisfied with their purchase because they're always wondering if they could have gotten a better result if they went with the other thing. So you either need just a few offers or a really, really good and really, really, really easy to navigate overview of all the offers that you are offering so that leads can quickly and easily self-select the most relevant offer for them. Word to the wise, the latter is actually a very challenging thing to do well in marketing, even for big companies with big teams. So is that a job that you want to assign yourself right now, my beloved small business owner? Okay. So confused customers don't buy is a truism that you'll also need to keep in mind when designing your marketing for each particular offer as well. Remember, leads want a quick way to know the quick and dirty of the offer, like how it's going to help them achieve something or alleviate a pain or feel a certain way, why that transformation is valuable and how their lives will be different after undergoing that transformation, what is the offer exactly, how much it costs in terms of money, time, effort on their part, etc., How do they sign up? How do they add to cart? How do they buy it? How do they take the next step? How much time do they have to make a decision? 
Is there any fast acting bonus going on, on, etc.? Are doors closing? And where can they ask questions or get more information about this offer? And in order to give them that quick and dirty quickly, that means that your messaging needs to be tantalizing enough to quickly hook their attention so they read, view, listen on. So this is a lead if you are a writer or it's the headline of your video, it's the first line you say. And let me tell you, a lot of creative work goes into what is that hook for good marketing? Like what is the thing we're going to lead with to to get people to want to know more? That is creative energy. It often takes several iterations and takes a while to practice to get the hang of how to hook your audience's attention. Your copywriting has to be skin friendly so they can determine relevance to their situation quickly. Your design needs to highlight the most important messaging and and information. So if it's a visual thing, their eye goes right to the place that's most relevant to them. How to buy or get on the wait list needs to be crystal freaking clear so they don't have to do any work to figure out how to give you their money. And all this information needs to be repeated multiple times in your marketing so that they keep being reminded about it and keep thinking about it and keep mulling it over until they're ready to get off the fence and make the decision. And especially if this is a high ticket offer, um, they need to hear it a bunch. They need to think, be thinking about it a bunch. So you see, making your offer simple for your customers to understand actually takes a lot of effort, a lot of skill, a lot of work on your part or the part of whoever is doing marketing on your behalf. So do you have the spoons to put in that effort for all of the offers that you're currently offering? Important question to ask yourself. All right, number three, reason why less is more in terms of offers in your business. And this one is kind of stating the obvious, but quality suffers when you offer beyond your capacity to give. If you have more offers than you have the capacity to serve, Or if there's more in in that offer than you're being compensated for, your customer will not be receiving a high quality, top notch experience. There's just no way around that because you cannot give beyond what you have available. Because if you try to give beyond what you have available, you'll have to start cutting corners and you're likely to deliver way later than you thought you would and way later than your customers were expecting you to deliver. And let me ask you, is that the vision you have for your business? Is that the experience you want to give the people who are investing in you? I'm guessing the answer is no. Number four reason why less is more when it comes to offers in your business. If you're throwing in too much and charging too little, burnout is an inevitable thing for you. And there is a huge, huge, huge personal cost to offering more than your true capacity to give. And by true capacity, I don't mean what you're technically able to do when you're forcing yourself or you're under the gun or feeling the pressure or terrified or in survival mode. By true capacity, I mean your true capacity to give is what you can provide when you are rested, eating and drinking properly, moving your body, tending to your health, socializing and having fun, spending quality time with loved ones, going outside, exploring your interests outside your business, enjoying yourself. Your true capacity means what you are able to provide when you are taking care of yourself. When you are working so hard that you don't have time to do that, burnout is guaranteed. It's inevitable. It'll come for you. And when you're trying to work through that burnout, the quality of your work and your customer service will definitely slip. So you've got to find a way to make the living that you want off of what you actually have the capacity to give. This means that many of you are going to have to raise your prices so that you can do a better job delivering fewer offers. Number five reason why less is more when it comes to offers for your business is that throwing in too much makes folks suspicious. 
So have you ever followed one of those tar- targeted ads that follows you around the internet where it's really cute clothes for unbelievably shockingly low prices and you're like sweet and you order a bunch and you're waiting to get all your new fits and look adorable and then it's a big disappointment when you open that box because it looks nothing like the picture maybe the material's cheaper or a different pattern or obviously a knockoff or the stitching is even and the fit is off well you only need to be burnt by this kind of thing once to be suspicious for life of too good to be true pricing Too good to be true pricing means something is wrong with it, we assume. We don't expect too much from it. Or we don't want to waste our money at all and and would rather wait and save up and invest in a more trustworthy offer from a brand that we know we can count on. So when you price your offers too low, especially if it's a really great offer with amazing value, you might actually be scaring people away. They'll wonder why you don't value your offer and doubt whether they're in good hands. Or they won't believe the marketing. They'll be like, there is actually no way I could get what they're promising for this price. I've tried and I've been burnt before. So, bottom line is, Why should they trust you to provide an amazing product or service if you don't trust you to? And if you don't demonstrate that trust that you have and the quality you are offering by pricing it appropriately? Why should they trust you if you aren't demonstrating your trust in your own quality through the price? Same deal if you're throwing in too many extras and freebies and discounts. Do you not think the core offer is valuable on its own? Do you have doubts that other people will? Why? Dive into this. Heal this. Your business needs you to. This is the fastest route to higher, better sales. Faster than making the price lower. Faster than offering another freebie or bonus. This inner work is the ticket. Because if you don't believe in the value of the core offer, no matter how many extras you throw in, you're going to have a hard time selling it. Because no one can tell you the value of your offer and make you believe it. That is inside work. You have to find a way to believe it yourself or you'll always be looking for external validation. And even when you get that external validation, you won't take it to heart. I've seen this over and over and over again in entrepreneurs, myself included, especially if we were socialized as women or our experience life through a marginalized identity. This is a hard one for us to let sink in and to really learn and step into our power in this way because we've been so conditioned against it. So here's why this is important. If you want your business to take off, if you want the sales you want, if you want the kind of sales that are going to make you live a happy, comfortable life where you get everything, you get a feel safe you get to have all your needs met you get to have all your wants met you get to use money to help the world this is why this is important to do this inner work because if you don't believe in the value of your offer it's going to throw your marketing off and you're not going to make the sales you want even if your higher self if you know that clean clear spiritual part of you knows how amazing this offer is but you have a, a, a really loud inner critic. Your self-doubt is, is, is really there. You're really feeling it. You're getting um, going down anxiety rabbit holes. If all that's clouding uh, your feelings about your offer, your belief in your offer and the value it brings to your people and the world, then your marketing becomes about getting validation rather than giving value to your people. And marketing that becomes about getting rather than giving doesn't tend to work out well. 
because every time you put out content or ads, you'll be obsessively checking engagement and comparing your stats, hoping someone else will give you permission to value your offer enough to not have to go so overboard with what's included in it and undercharge so much. Every bit of marketing you put out there has high stakes when you haven't done the inner work to build belief in your own offer, which puts a lot more pressure on any interaction you have with potential customers. Even if you're giving them helpful how-tos in your marketing, you are wanting emotional labor from them in return, in addition to wanting them to buy. People can sense when you want more than you say you do, when there are hidden strings attached, which means fewer people will want to take you up on your offer, fewer people will want to engage with your marketing. And then when that happens, you'll doubt the value you're bringing to the table even more. So if you're terrified about whether or not your offer is going to sell, The move is actually not to lower your prices or throw more into that offer. The move is to explore that terror. What are you really afraid of? Why? What would it mean about you if it happened? Would it actually mean that about you? What is this terror protecting you from? Do you agree you need to be protected from it? What healing needs to happen to soothe this frightened part of you? And importantly, what skilled and consenting emotional support can you enlist to help you examine these fears? Maybe it's time to go to therapy or book with me, the Marketing Confidence Cheerleader, or perhaps it's time to join a coaching program or a community of entrepreneurs or all of the above. The move is also to build your confidence in your offers, which means that you need to notice and celebrate positive feedback from your customers and your colleagues and people commenting on your work. I recommend creating a ritual for yourself. Mine is that I handwrite positive feedback in a little notebook because there's something about handwriting that makes it stick in my brain and my heart and it's also nice to have all this positive feedback collected in one place so I can I can read it back to myself when I'm having a wobble and show myself the evidence that my work means a lot to people that my work changes people's businesses and their lives and their outlooks and their mindsets for the better I have all of this evidence in one place whenever I need a reminder so building your confidence in your offer so that when you market it, you're not needing anybody to validate you. It's truly like a service to your community because you're offering them something amazing that you know is amazing without having to be told. To build that belief, you're going to need to own your medicine. You're going to have to note transformations and how this will change your clients' lives and the people and communities around them. And if it hasn't happened yet, you need to imagine, you need to daydream, you need to think about what this is going to do for people, what you want it to do for people, for their communities, for the world. And you need to give yourself credit for your qualifications to provide this incredible offer. And yes, I do mean formal training and certifications, if that's part of your experience, but that's not the only thing that makes someone qualified to do what they do. It's your time practicing. It's your time experimenting. It's your time learning on the job or from your own lived experiences, etc. How are you the person to deliver this incredible offer? Give yourself credit for those things. It's also important when building confidence in your offer that you rest, eat, drink, make merry, and otherwise take really good care of yourself so that you have the emotional resources to be able to be vulnerable, put yourself out there, and share your offer with the world in as bold simplicity and elegance as it deserves. So to reiterate, confidence is an inside job. Trust is an inside job. And you need both confidence and trust not to offer too much for too little. 
This is why it is so important for entrepreneurs to get support for their mental and emotional health. And this is why I am the Marketing Confidence Cheerleader at your service. So to wrap up, simple offers are easier to market, sell, and deliver. Elegantly simple and bold offers are so much easier to design messaging, write copy, and create irresistible marketing for. They're so much easier to sell because instead of needing the customer to tell you it's great, you can tell them it's great. And then they will believe you because you believe that yourself. There's so much easier for you to deliver because you haven't promised more than you have a true capacity to give without hurting yourself. So doing the inner work so that you don't feel like you have to offer so much for so little is one of the best things that you can do for your business and for yourself. And you know, if you'd like some help building belief in your offer and structuring and pricing it appropriately, I would absolutely love to be your marketing confidence cheerleader. I have a secret sale going on through um, 1159 PM, Wednesday, April 26th. Details for how to get in on that and the huge savings available are linked in the show notes. But if you miss that deadline, don't fret. I can still be your personal marketing confidence cheerleader. And to find out how to work with me, just check out the show notes for pep talk talk in a pinch if you just want to talk to me once or season of support my signature program to majorly up level your business and your confidence in it. And if you loved this episode, please do let me know because I love that positive feedback. It does my heart good. Share this episode with a friend. Tag me in your takeaways on the socials and leave me a five-star review. Why don't you? 